This is a 2021 Volvo XC60 T8 Polestar Engineered. And I think I'm going to call it the Swedish sleeper because this is not the plug-in hybrid you expected. My name is Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I want to tell you more about it. What is a Volvo XC60? It is a BMW X3 sized two row SUV with an internal combustion engine in front, an electric motor in back, and a 11.6 kilowatt hour battery in the middle. But that's not the exciting bit. The T8 Polestar engineered is the highest XC60 trim in the lineup above the Momentum, our design and inscription models, which means you get 21 inch wheels rolling on summer tires, a front shock tower brace, Aki Bono brakes, and Olin's shocks. What? The Polestar engineered XC60 is powered by a supercharged and turbocharged 2 liter inline 4 cylinder engine, producing a peak output of 328 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque as well as an electric motor producing a peak output of 87 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque. That combines to produce 415 horsepower and 494 pound-feet of torque. The engine's power then goes through an 8-speed automatic transmission and onto the front wheels. The electric motor goes right to the rear wheels, and yes, that means power goes to all four wheels. The base price for the 2021 Volvo XC60 is $42,795. The Polestar engineered XC60 starts at $70,595 and my test car cost $71,290. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications including dimensions, fuel economy and options in the description. All right, let's take a look around the car. It is another windy, cloudy afternoon here in Michigan, but you are looking at bright silver metallic paint on a 2021 Volvo XC60 Polestar Engineered. This is a T8 XC60 and it's part of the Recharge series, which means it's plug-in hybrid. And it is a looker. Volvos in the last few years have just been really sharp nice designs and this is absolutely no exception. I love the general shape. I love the clean lines. I love the purposefulness of it. I love the short overhangs on the rear and in the front. You have more than 112 inches of wheelbase and the overall length is over 100, only 184 inches. And then this being pull start engineered, you've got 21 inch wheels with Pirelli P0 tires on them and those are massive 14.6 inch discs and Aki Bono brakes. Very, very big. And nothing to nothing to worry about in back. They're not as big, of course, and it's not a six piston caliper, just a single piston floating, but still a good sized disc. In back, still a really nice clean looking shape. You have a smartly done dual exhaust. Although that is the, you know, integrated in, not actual real, but you know, the real pipes are right there, so it's not bad. And this is a really cool detail. I like this right here. It is Polestar engineered. How about that? Generally speaking, I think that the Polestar engineered Volvo XC60, see what I did there? Is just a really nice clean shape. I love the big panoramic sunroof. And I love the general look, and I think they offer a lot of practical value as well. And normally I touch on things like the suspension and stuff right here, but this car is so interesting. I'm actually gonna go just a little bit deeper than that in just a moment. But right now, let's look inside. Okay, so let's start in the very back. It's a nice little touch here, right under the L. and you've got a healthy amount of cargo room. That slides up a lot of space here. Moving in back, you can see that there's a lot of leg room in here to work with, and you've got a little bit of bolstering in the seats, but I have plenty of knee room in back, no problem here at all. And also, this is a neat little feature. You have some buttons down here, pull on that. And you got like a little 
built-in booster seat for young children. How about that? But let's move on to the front. In front, you've got a 12.3 inch instrument cluster screen and a nine inch center console screen. And of course, all my favorite stuff, the car's not on right now, but you get heated seats and a heated steering wheel. This is a nice layout inside, just as the design is outside. Start uh, your drive mode switch, that's actually a rotary dial. And then you actually turn this to turn the engine on as well. And this is just a nice little clever way to hide your Femmins here. So that's a wireless phone charger and some cup holders right there. And when you turn it on, foot on the brake. Now it's on. And looks like this car's upset that the doors are open and that, uh, and that uh, I don't have my seatbelt buckled. But check this out. There's my heated steering wheel and heated seats. Anyway, just like the exterior, the interior is a real nice clean design. I like the black with the contrasting yellow seat belts. And uh, I like the bolstering. You have heavy bolstering both upper and lower. And you've got plenty of adjustment in the seat as well. So I think it's really beautiful looking interior and comfortable as well. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to show you this suspension. Being a Volvo, that doesn't instantly go and recognize your mind advanced suspension, but check this out. We've got a double wishbone suspension right here. There's the lower arm down there and then follow it up. And there is the upper control arm right there. And not only is it a double wishbone suspension, which does a much better job of controlling the wheel, you've got a shock tower brace and what? Adjustable shock absorbers from Olin's. Check that out. That is not press a button in the dash and you can choose between normal and sport. These have 22 stiffness settings that you adjust outside of the car and that's front and back. So here's the front adjustment right here on the two sides and in back, You see that cap right there? Well, that is just a little rubber cap that squeezes on. On the other side, I took it off, and there are your adjustments right there. So this has four corners of adjustment for the Olin's adjustable shock absorbers, 22 settings. That's super cool. And it gets more interesting still because this is a multi-link rear suspension, which is cool. I like multi-link and uh, there's the arms and stuff like that. But look at that plastic piece you see under there. And sorry, the echo is coming from the muffler. See that plastic piece? That is a centrally mounted transverse leaf spring that Volvo is using. That reminds me of Corvette. How cool is that? And so you see, you see the different links there. You see the Olin shock absorber in back. And then right there in the foreground up here, that piece right there, that's the anti-roll bar. But yeah, that green plastic, that's a transversely mounted leaf spring for the rear, for the rear. That's just super interesting. Now the Volvo XC60 can be had with an air suspension if you want that instead. And that's load leveling and height adjustable and all those things. But this car doesn't have that. This car has this and I just, so I'm just super fascinated by this suspension. Hi everybody. I have to tell you, this has got to be one of the most fascinating cars I've driven so far. I mean, the combination of things going on here, turbocharged and supercharged two liter engine, hybrid power, plug-in hybrid no less, a super interesting suspension configuration, adjustable Olin shocks front and rear that you get out of the car and adjust, in an SUV package with all sorts of like, you know, child safety and uh, the usual bits of like, you know, blind spot monitoring and all the safety equipment you're used to. These, these things, that doesn't add up to anything you'd expect. This is 
properly unique this car, not just because of one attribute or the other, but the combination of things that you get here. So I, I just, I'm absolutely intrigued by just the existence of this car. So let's start with powertrain because, you know, 415 horsepower. So 328 of those horses come from a two liter engine. That is a lot of power from not a lot of displacement, but that engine is both supercharged and turbocharged. So you get forced induction early from the supercharger, and then you get a lot more forced induction from the turbocharger once it spins up from the exhaust manifold. So that's a really, really fascinating combination of forced induction to give you a lot of power in a lot of, in a lot of areas. And then on top of that, it's complemented by an electric motor that delivers power from zero RPM effectively, 87 horsepower and 177 pound feet. And Volvo did what is slowly becoming a common thing to do. I first remember seeing it on Toyotas where the internal combustion engine is on one axle and the electric motor is on the other so that you can have all wheel drive without having a half shaft running uh, between the two axles, which takes away weight, frees up some space, and it's fewer moving parts as well. So that's the case here. You get the engine in front, the engine powers the front wheels, the electric motor is in back, it handles the rear wheels. Now, that does mean that power is heavily front wheel drive biased, okay? You know, a good three quarters of the power always goes to the front no matter what. But if you look at it from a torque point of view, it's not quite as bad because 177 pound-feet of torque versus 317 pound-feet of torque. And don't forget, that's 317 pound-feet of torque once the engine spins up to a good RPM. And the 177 pound-feet of torque in back is pretty much from zero RPM. So that's more balance that's even. And in real-world driving terms, it's not like you feel some big torque steering nonsense monster here you still feel a good balance of all-wheel drive power you don't get a lot of front wheel spin or anything like that so in terms of real world driving it does feel all-wheel drive which is nice now this is a t8 volvo xc60 they start at t5s and that is a 250 horsepower version of this car and then it goes t6 that's still gasoline powered only where you get 318 or 17 horsepower somewhere in there and then when you go t8 you get this a little bit extra power but you get the electric motor in back and it's actually the t8 polestar engineered that really juices things up because there's a non-polestar engineered t8 and that makes 400 horsepower total even and this is 415. so that means you get a plug-in hybrid mid-size suv that has not plug-in hybrid mid-size suv performance and right now i am in the hybrid driving mode i'm going to go ahead and move it to the polestar engineered driving mode and we're gonna go ahead and do a nice launch. We're gonna switch to Polestar engineered driving mode. I'm gonna go ahead and slow down. All right. Oh, jeez. Yeah, <laughs> that is not slow. Uh, zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds, according to Volvo which is not what you'd expect from a Volvo, from a plug-in hybrid Volvo. And you gotta give respect to the Polestar engineered tune here because, uh, yeah. So there's a little bit of hesitation off the line. There's a little bit of room to have more oomph right at the launch, but man, yeah, once it gets going, you get pushed back in your seat a healthy amount and yeah, that's, uh, that's not a bad experience. And you know, you get good shifts. It's an eight speed automatic. You do have paddle shifters, so I can, uh, I can control that myself currently in third gear and now in second, it's nice to have that option. Let's see if it automatically upshifts. It does. So it does, it does not give you full control, like a full manumatic, but you know, whatever, uh, computers are everywhere and they're controlling more and more just take take the freedom you can get <laughs> you do have a nice set of options in terms of drive modes you know constant all-wheel drive pure which is the electric drive mode hybrid which is kind of your normal individual and pole start engineered and if you're going low enough you also have an off-road but I'm not exactly sure why you'd use off-road in this car in 
is specifically the Polestar engineered car because you've got Pirelli P0 summer only tires, 21 inch wheels. I don't think you'd want to take this off road, but whatever, you have it, it exists. Maybe you have a different set of knobby wheels and tires you want to throw on it, throw on on occasion, who knows, whatever. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave it in Polestar engineered mode because this car is a handler too. I mean, you saw Olin's shock absorbers, 22 adjustments that you go out and manually adjust yourself. This is legit. This is not just a sport button that, you know, marginally changes the suspension a little bit to give you a slightly stiffer ride. I mean, you've got real gradients here in terms of adjustment, which you have to give respect to Polestar and to Volvo for um, giving you a car that can do that. So you can have it in full soft and have a comfortable ride, but then if you happen to get to this like beautiful set of switchbacks and you really want to have firm, firm body control, you can go out, spend a few minutes, adjust it to full hard and have a super stiff suspension to work with. That's impressive. And then the springs too. I mean, you have standard coil springs in front, but that transversely mounted leaf spring in back, you know, that reminds me of, you know, older Corvettes. I don't think the C8 has that anymore. They lost, they lost the transversely mounted um, leaf spring when they went to mid engine, but still, that's cool. That's cool to have that uh, transversely mounted leaf spring. It just brings back good memories. Now, I have to be honest, I didn't, I, I looked at the Olin suspension. I didn't play with the adjustments myself. I didn't have, I don't have this car for a long time. I, I think you'd really want to get familiar with it, drive it around and test it and figure out where you're most comfortable with shock absorber settings. But even with the default settings that Volvo uh, lended the car to me with, you know, it's good body control. Now, the frame itself isn't the stiffest I've ever driven. Certainly, the Porsche Macan feels more solid. Um, BMW's X3 feels a little bit more solid, but this is competitive with that for sure. It's definitely playing in that category. And uh, otherwise, body control is really good. The steering weight is really nice. You've got a nice heavy steering wheel to work with. It's more precise than I expected. And because you have 255 um, millimeter width Pirelli tires, summer only tires to work with, grip is really pretty darn decent. And I found myself happier and enjoying myself a lot more than I expected when I got to my favorite twisties around here. So really, hats off to Volvo for delivering way more fun than I expected to in, a, in their midsize SUV category. I mean, honestly, I was not expecting this. You know, this is part of what Volvo calls their recharge. That's what they call their plug-in hybrids. And I was like, okay, so this is gonna lean heavily on environmental friendliness and things like that. And, uh, the, you know, the, the driver enthusiast side of things will be, you know, token things here and there, but nothing serious. I mean, like, I felt like the Polestar engineering uh, label was gonna be a little bit disingenuous. And I was flat wrong. This is, this is a legit, serious Polestar engineered tune way more than I expected. And they use the plug-in hybrid side of things to deliver more power. It's definitely uh, environmentally friendly in the fact that you've got, I showed 21 miles of electric only range when this thing started with a full charge, but you get a lot of fun and you can really use this power when you want to. And again, 415 horsepower, 494 pound-feet of torque. So you've got a lot of power to have fun with. And you know, the body control is a lot better than you'd expect. So those two things combined together, I, I'm just, I think you can tell by the tone of my voice, it's, it's surprising. And of course, this car will settle down and behave nice and friendly when you want it to. When I first get the car and you go in hybrid mode, it's plenty quiet. There's good road noise isolation, good wind noise isolation, and the pure eco drive, which is the electric only mode, that works really well as well. You can drive up to 78 miles an hour on the electric motor alone. And you know that's plenty quick for the vast majority of driving you need to get done, especially if you wanna just use that for say the city. Furthermore, the seats are plenty comfortable, plenty supportive, and plenty of ways to adjust it to find that comfort level. And the nine inch touchscreen works well. You have a lot of options to play with. 
and you've got standard Apple CarPlay, standard Android Auto. Uh, this car has a wireless charging pad, so you know all those kinds of conveniences. You have a lot of adjustments to work with, um, plenty of adaptability with uh, charging and things like that. Um, and because it's a plug-in hybrid, um, if you start with a full charge, you get 57 miles per gallon equivalent when it's just the gasoline engine. It's still, for an SUV of this size, pretty darn reasonable, 27 miles per gallon. And those are combined figures. So this car offers a lot. And honestly, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful car as well. Volvo in the last five, 10 years, I mean, their design has been near unparalleled, right? I mean, it's, it's distinctively Swedish distinctively beautiful, also understated. So that's a, that's a really great combination of things to have. And then this car, you know, you've got a couple of little cues here and there. I mean, obviously the bright yellow Akibano brake calipers are there and they're easy to see with the 21 inch wheels. And those are forged aluminum 21 inch wheels, Why, by the way. And plus, you know, you've got bright yellow seat belts. That's a little loud, but I mean, this is a pretty quiet, understated car, generally speaking, even with all those things. And that's why you've got yourself a pretty darn impressive Swedish sleeper. This car is not gonna attract a lot of attention, but can deliver a lot of fun. And uh, I have to say, I, I was seriously taken aback by this car, surprised by what it can do, surprised by how well it does it, and surprised that it's doing all that as a Volvo. <laughs> Never judge a book by its cover. I get, I see more evidence of that all the time. Here's an excellent example. I'm Robin Warner. Thank you for watching.